everybody. I am so excited to be here. I'm just going to wait for a few minutes so you guys can log on. So this is a scene that I actually have painted in plain air. This is from Hilo, Hawaii, which is on the rainforest side of the big island of Hawaii. This is the side in the news last year. Oh, whoops. When the volcano was erupting and there was all of that in the news about the volcano. We were there when the volcano was erupting and it was pretty fantastic and amazing to see. Of course, in a photograph, when you're painting something from a photograph, things that you see in person sometimes stand out bigger um, than a photograph can take. You know how every time we were like, oh, look at that beautiful cloud, I'm gonna take a picture of it, and you take a picture of it and it looks this big on the screen. Um, and so we, you know, that's why plein air studies are really good for capturing color, capturing the feeling of what it was like to be there. And so this is actually the plein air piece that I painted of that scene. So we're gonna be recreating this scene. So they look quite a bit different, um, but the feeling is there. And what, what my intention, of course, whenever I'm taking a photo of a scene, usually it's to capture cloud, a, cl a certain cloud movement or the light. I always take a picture of any plein air scene that I'm doing first, just in case things drastically, drastically change and I need to, I need to go back and refer to it. Or in this case, I have this, I have the photograph so I can remember, you know, okay, where exactly things were. But then I also have my plein air piece that I can remember the specific greens. These greens are much different than these greens in this photograph because the photos just flatten and darken everything. And so I'm going to be using both of these in my painting. I'm going to be painting it about the same size. This is about a 9 by 12 You are, and this is this is actually 400 grit. I'm going to be using 500 grit. So this is one that I actually did just this morning because I wanted to make sure that the palette I had, that I chose was appropriate. So here's the palette I'm going to use mostly. Of course, these are just loose. This is just a loose selection of colors. I could go back to my big main palette box and pick some other things, but I, yeah, this is pretty much what I'm, I think I'm going to use that I used over here in this little piece right here. I'm going to first start out these dark colors right here. This is going to be kind of my sketch in loose, just the, the shapes of the palm trees, the sky colors right here. So I'm going to scoot these over. That's the underpainting colors. These mid-tone greens um, for the foreground layer of the palm trees section. And then there's this little distant hill back here, and those are going to be cooler colors, cooler and more desaturated. So those are the greens for that area. And then, of course, I have my, my sky colors and then some cloud colors right here. Actually, those two are clouds. These are also going to be some kind of vegetation in the in with the palm trees. Okay, so these are all different brands. These are Giro's. This is a Terry Ludwig, of course. This is a Giro. Um, this is a Great American. Um, this is a Unison. This is a Townsend. Okay, so now that that's finished, I'm also going to be using my handy little fan brush. You know I love it so much. It's a number six size acrylic fan brush. I think I bought it at Michael's. Um, it's just, it's kind of, it's not too soft. It's a thick, it's a thicker fan brush. And so I like to use it just to make some little wispy effects. But basically, so this, uh, hopefully you can kind of see both things at the same time, all of it together. This obviously is a focus on the picture, especially really focuses on the sky. We were pretty far away from the uh, this other shoreline of this inlet. And so it makes 
all of these elements look much smaller than I actually want to paint them. I want to really create this reaching effect like I have here. And this little cluster of palm trees right here, I know it's hard to see in the video. I wanted to, I wanted to, they're very bunched together. And so I wanted to just kind of broaden them out a little bit. And so that's why I chose to make them a little bit bigger here. And really just focusing on the movement of these palm trees. And so I'm just going to referencing this piece over here with this one showing how far do I want this little spit of land to poke out. And so I'm just going to make that general line of that, of this little edge of the shore right here. And then the land goes up a little bit. And then of course, this is the predominant palm tree right here. And so really what, what, you know, whenever I'm looking at something like that versus my piece of paper, I kind of have to figure out where do I want the palm tree to actually be located. Of course, here it's almost in the center of this image. And I don't want it to be that low. I want it to be a little higher and taller. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna really put the, the palm tree in about this area. And palm trees are almost just like drawing a spider, if you think about it. And then a, just a very straight stalk. And that palm tree does go right down to this shore and there's kind of a little distant higher part of that land. And then of course the distant shoreline, the one that I said I was gonna use the cool colors in, I'm just gonna put that back there somewhere. Okay, so I have my main, my main palm tree, the spider shape that I made. And then there's of course all of these other there's banyan trees in the background and lower bushes and shrubs. But let's go ahead and focus on the other, the other palm trees. Now, in this one I, over here, I did three. And the one I did this morning, I just did two. And so it really doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You can, um, you can paint it however you want. Of course, I love to do odd numbers. I'm going to be using this hard, this is a new pastel and they have these wonderful hard edges. And this is actually a pretty, this is a 285P color, if you can see that. And I love to use them for, of course, tree trunks because you can just draw right straight up and it just really creates that dynamic line. And then for palm trees, I use kind of the front corners and I just, pull them out to create these shapes. Now I'm not too worried about, I, I want the general, the frond effect. If for some reason it gets a little too bunchy, I can always go back in and carve out negatively later on. So I'm really just trying to kind of get the general shape of it. And I just very quickly flick, push and flick those, those shapes out. And we can always refine this later on. And in the distance, I'm going to kind of be mixing more really just general, like very small and not as, not as hard. I'm trying to use a little softer mark back here. And also I'm going to use a little bit of orchid in the background just because they, they're going to recede a little bit. So I'm wanting to, to change their color a little bit. I'm going to put in the sky, which is just, I'm going to use a little bit of pink where the blue of the sky would go, um, just so it can have some vibrancy to it. I'm not going to worry about cutting around this, you know, being really careful around this because I am going to 
blend some things a little bit. I just want to kind of show some color there. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of this fuchsia into some of these as well. We'll really work on those shapes the more we go. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go down here and I'm just going to very gently, I'm using very, very, very soft to just put in the general dark shrubberies all around. I love to start darker and then of course you know like you hear me say all the time in all my lessons I move to those lighter values and of course I'm also thinking about there are shadow areas on this shoreline and so those like this this bush right here it would have a shadow going down to the shore so that's why I'm making that area a little bit darker this right here those in the photograph there are trees that are casting shadows down. There aren't necessarily shadows from the palm trees that you can see. Um, you could put those if you wanted to. Um, it would depend, of course, on the time of day. Um, we were out here really pretty midday, so there were shadows, but mostly just from cloud directions. It wasn't necessarily harsh sun. Um, it was more cloud, you know, clouds casting shadows with a little bit of sunlight in there but i do i like to develop my value map of course first water it's always good to bring especially if you have a dark shoreline bring some of that down that just helps you place the water eventually and then of course in the distance there you know there's going to be a little bit but it's also going to be a little bit softer so so now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to do some the sky, this, this pink, I'm just going to blend it in with a piece of pipe foam. I'm not going to use alcohol here, mostly because I don't want it to drip down onto the fronds. I don't want it to drip down and make those run. And plus, I just really wanted to do some more for you guys that don't use you are. Not all of us have the luxury of having that available to us. Oops. See, there's a mistake. I had green on this this um, this pipe foam, so it got on my paper. So be careful. Don't do what I do. Do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, you can always just cover back up if, if you think that it's gonna mess your um, painting up. I'm just, just kind of thinking about how I want the, the clouds to be. And I am going to use alcohol on the palms and on the, this these areas. Um, so I have my ha help, handy little Elsie the cow cup that I love to use and I'm using my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use more brush. Generally when I do trees like these trees, I can just be all around and crazy because you I just want to kind of blend and and push that pigment into the paper, right? Well, up here, I don't want to be all crazy because palm trees are so iconic. We have to be pretty accurate. So I, I like a pretty dry brush. So I'll get it wet and then I'll kind of tap it on my board. And then I'll use almost the latter end, not the full fan, but like three quarters of the fan. And I angle it and I just pull it down. Do you see how that creates that effect? And so I'm kind of using more the corners of the fan brush. And I'm still, of course, I'll still be refining these with, of course, the dry pastel layers as we go. I don't really do a lot with the stalks. I'm gonna leave those as they are or not stalks, I guess they're trunks. <laughs> but I'm just going to kind of work over here. Of course, now that dark is going over that light sky. If I put 
the the pink after or the pink before then I would be it would be mixing I would be mixing that pink pigment with this blue pigment and I don't want to do that I wanted to leave that pretty pretty raw and I can pull that over it up there I didn't have any pigment but using this alcohol I can pull it up there to create those other fronds So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I'm going to put in a little bit of Mauna Kea and I'm just going to swipe it in. Not worry too much about, I'll go right over those palm, those palm trunks. Just to make sure that that's in there. I'm not going to underpaint like the, the color of the clouds. I'm just going to leave that pretty bright. That's what I did here, and that's what I did here. I, whenever I referenced this, I went back and found it in my in my storage because I knew I, I wanted to paint this for you guys, just because it was beachy. And I know a lot of you might have palm tree photos, not necessarily wave photos. Um, and I'm also putting that in with another piece of pipe foam, just blending that in. And it's a little wet down here, and so you have to be careful. Sometimes if you do that, when you rub it a little, the, it flakes off and it will stick to the wet areas of your, of your underpainting. Um, usually you can just tap it off and just kind of wait for it to dry a little bit. But that's really how I'm going to do the underpainting. That's pretty much finished. And then we're going to work on adding the greens and developing the sky. These are very fronds. There's tons of fronds on these, so I'm going to tame those a little bit and then we'll finish it up. Okay, so I think it's probably dry and the way to tell is you, of course you touch it and if it's cold, then it's still gonna be wet. So we're just gonna keep it going right here. I'm gonna start building the greens. Um, I have, all, of course, all the blue, but I'm just going, this is a Giro that I'm using and I'm just going to gently start and I'm really looking more at this painting right here this one you know I could zoom in you know you can um, but since this was this is what really informed me when I was there at the time sitting on the shoreline in Hawaii so I really wanted to recreate this this was it captured the colors and the lighting and so I'm going to really focus on this piece right now it's a really good general warm dark green, darkish green. Um, of course, there are darker greens available. This is pretty light. Really, the darkest colors that I have in my plein air piece are the blues, and so I don't really want to go too much darker, and so that's the, the blue is really the darkest that I'm going to go, and I remember when I was painting this scene, I was struggling with having the right greens. Of course, when you visit any area that's not where you live and work and paint often, colors change. That's why that's why so many manufacturers, pastel brands, and you know they release so many lines of color palettes that are that are southeast, southwest, southwest U.S. or northeast U.S. It's because there are different colors, and the greens that this scene had, you can't even really tell in the photograph. Were so much greener than anything I have in my palette, even the greenest green that I have in Amarillo, Texas, which Amarillo means yellow, and so that's what we are. Um, <laughs> the greenest greens were not quite green enough, and so I really layered. I was looking at my choices here. I was really layering a lot of greens, and also I, I layered some oranges over here because in this photograph there are some kind of maybe even dead like maybe the river flooded and some and some vegetation died because there was too much water and so there is a little bit of orange along this along this shoreline um, but there's so much vegetation in Hawaii and so you just have to really 
you know, I just really had to play with the greens I was using. And so you can see that I'm using a lighter, a lighter green, and I'm mainly going to be working on this area. And every now and then I'll, I'll put a little bit of that same color back here, but the very lightest touch. If I am light, you know, lightly touching here, I'm even going to pull back even a little bit more here, um, back in the distance. And so, but I want that same color to be there because I want it to show, look, it's the same type of vegetation. It's just gonna be a little bit more, the pressure I'm gonna pull off of it a little bit, just so I'm not laying quite as much color down. And that's why I love the harder pastels because you can really either glaze the color on or you can push harder. With the softer pastels, especially if you have a really heavy touch, those you can those can get you in trouble especially if you if you feel like you paint too heavy or cover up all of your underpainting i want my underpainting to show through because i like those blues it adds some it adds some sparkle these are very analogous colors of course analogous here's a color wheel means colors that are next to each other they're brother-sister colors. And so I'm going to be mostly using these colors in this foreground, really throughout, really this, this whole piece, except for some accent colors, those purples, which are comp more complementary. And so those colors, even this pink, those colors are gonna push, pull, you know, push through the final layers to add a little bit of vibrancy, but the general painting is gonna be mostly analogous. Okay, okay, I'm still working. Haven't done anything with the water yet. I'm mainly working on how I want this shoreline to act. This area right here where the shadow of this, this tree form, I'm gonna keep that pretty much all just under painting. And on either side of it, to really emphasize those shadows, you can put brighter values on either side, will really emphasize that light, that sense of light that you wanna bring into a painting. Also thinking if there's light coming from here that's casting the shadow, then there's also gonna be light up here. There's gonna be light coming down here. So you always have to think, how does the light react? What is it doing to what it's hitting? And so adding a little few touches, if it's coming this way, maybe it's also hitting a little bit back there. Thinking like, think like the sun. <laughs> can also, you can soften it a little bit if you don't like the harsh blues. And then I'm also gonna start putting a little bit of greens up in the palm fronds and some of them you know I think I'm actually gonna let's see so the palm tree I remember the ones that were closest to me which was this one right here this one that I'm making that I made bigger they were darker they they definitely have they're definitely green, but they definitely also have a lot of shadow going on because some parts of them, they're all twisty and bendy. They're not just fanned out like a fan brush. They're, they go back and they come forward. And so they're, they're catching the light in all different ways. They go up as well, not just all down. Sometimes I like to blend them down. And of course, when I do the sky, I'll change a little bit of the shapes of them. Distance here, let's see. And really light touch once again. I'm gonna use my foam and actually pull them down a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start cutting in the blues over the pink. Um, I'm just going to start with the sky. And this is gonna help, help me tame a couple of these palm fronds. I got a little crazy um, with the palm fronds, and so I wanna 
work on them a little bit. Still using a really light touch. I don't want to cover up quite all the pink just yet. I'm really wanting to be careful. And so here's where you kind of start negatively painting, where you can really just cut in to the, the, to the palm and change its shape immediately just by going over over what you've done a little bit just to refine just to refine make things you know make things bigger and then I've, and then i pull it back in now in this painting i had the cloud behind the one i did this morning i kind of played with having the blue behind palm tree and so now I'm just kind of like this one with the blue, it creates some that dynamic color next to each other. And so I'm just gonna keep go with that, even though this palm tree is in front of a cloud and you know the blues are way up here. But I really wanted to bring those blues together. And so I often go back in and have several different versions of one piece um, just to tell the story a little bit more even going back in with the blues if I lose some of that trunk I can go back in there and get it okay I this I love this color this is a really beautiful blue um, I'll also put it down here in the water just because that's what up in the sky and so what goes up in the sky usually not always but usually I'll also put down in the water not in the distant part of the water because I, I don't want it to be quite that vibrant. So I'm just putting it in this foreground. Okay. And you can also use your pipe foam. Just to blend that a little bit as well. Okay, so this is a new pastel. It's a very warm yellow. It's almost actually the same color as the, the uh, UART. And I like it because I can just, you know, that hard, the hard quality of that new pastel, I can really carve in and around these tree trunks, these palm trunks, um, without having to be not too mushy. It's not going to migrate too much. And if I wanted to soften it a little bit, I can even go just right over that palm to soften that so it's not so harsh. You can see I'm just really using the tip here to carve into those fronds just to define them a little bit more. And this hard pastel just really allows me to be able to kind of scribble around around the um, the trees. These, you know, trees are, palm trees are They're a specialized shape, and so we have to be use a different touch than we normally would. Okay, I'm gonna go off, and I'm actually gonna just kind of glaze over that one in the distance because it pushes it back even further. Okay, so I'm adding a lighter value. This is a Townsend. I'm adding just a lighter value to the clouds just to show a little bit more character to the clouds. I can go back up over the over the blues here just to kind of show more wispy effects. And then you can also go back in with your blues and you can even just glaze back in. If you want if you lost some of the shapes or if if, if now when you look at it if you think, "Oh, I don't love that so much, I'm going to change it." Um, so it's really kind of up to you. Clouds are Kind of personal. I love to step back, especially with clouds, to really be able to see the shapes that I'm making with them. And right now I'm really wanting to highlight this and so I'm taking away some of the cloud from behind it because what I see is that I want it to be a little bit more vibrant. And that value difference is just really nice right now to me. I like it. You can see I'm leaving the pinks. The pinks are still showing through and that just really creates some um, painterly effects 
that are my favorite. I love to leave a lot of my underpainting showing. You can see that sometimes I'm using, like right now I'm pushing very hard. I'm, I'm pushing so hard I'm shaking my board. Other times, if I want just like, you know, there's a hint that there's a wisp of cloud. I can use the same color and just pull off and maybe blend with my finger a little bit to imply, you know, this is a hazier part of the sky that's just showing through to imply that, that pretty cloud. So now what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and start working a little bit on this distant, distant greens. And so these are, this is also a Giro, not going to put in a lot of detail here. This one is much cooler. Just shows a little bit of how it's receding off in the back. A little bit of blue here. I'm not quite finished with the water yet or the mountain. I'm going to lighten up this mountain a little bit, maybe. You really want, you know, that to be a pretty soft edge. And so I'm going to just lighten it a little bit. You know, you can be loose here. You don't have to go around every single little thing. Now, this is when I start to get quiet when I'm... Okay, so here what I see. This is a self-critique. The mountain is going up here. And then when it goes up behind this one, it goes up and it goes and it's higher. That would not happen in Hawaii. It's a very, very soft, gradual. Now, if I was painting Powder or Canyon, which is where I'm from, that could totally happen. But it, I would, if, if I wanted to show that, if I really wanted there to be a difference in height, if there were crags and steps in the mountain, I would want to show that out in the open. Anyway, so I'm going to correct that. So see here, so I'm going to lower it. So it's going to be a little bit more, make a little bit more sense. And those are things you just really have to be open to seeing, changing about your own work. Um, you know, we all notice things at a different time, but that just softened that mountain a little bit, especially I'm lightening it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna add some. character up here in these clouds just to break up that blue a little bit. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to add a few bits, a little bit more color into my palm fronds. So, you know how I talked earlier about how there's some areas that are more lit. So maybe that one, the sun is coming You know, they don't all have to be one color. They can be multicolors, and they are. If, if you ever observe, they really catch light completely differently. And it's not always what is close, you know, so if the sun is coming this way, it's not always what's closest to the sun with a palm tree because they can be twisted and they blow. And so it's, they're not as stationary as, as a, just a traditional deciduous tree. And so the light on them can be very different. Now I'm also going to bring some greens down here. Almost finished, or at least finished for you guys. Of course, I, you know, I like to keep working. But I do like to keep these videos around an hour because I know that they're hard to get to sometimes. Let's see, I'm gonna put some more. Sometimes if you put a wrong color in, you can just go back in with your, whatever you had as your underpainting lightened that up too much. So how, you, how do you fix things that you mess up? You either knock it off or you go back in with your rubbing alcohol. It's a prime example right there. Of, oh, I put, a, I put a wrong value somewhere. I'm gonna fix it. 
because I still wanted that to be in shadow. So just mix it. And if you get a little bit too much alcohol, try not to let it drip too much down into this water. I want this water to be real smooth. I'm gonna put a little bit of oranges in here. I really, and th this is an example of using almost accent colors. It just brings a little bit of vibrancy. Now I'm kind of going off the cuff here. <laughs> Bring a little bit of that down into the water as well. To especially I you know to to add just even a little bit more texture I will go in and actually just draw especially a couple of the fronds even oh, and you could use pastel pencil I I don't mind using graphite um, it just depends. I love the shape of this palm tree. A little too wild. Let's tame you a little bit. So see, you can go back in and just change things if you want to. Let's see, you know what the deal is, is the trunk is going over here, but the main body of the palm is over here. So really the main trunk needs to be more, to be leaning more. So see, those are all things as you go. It's live painting. This is like live theater, people, live theater. <laughs> things change. Just because you have your, your idea of what happens, it might not be the way it works. So we're, we're just gonna take out that trunk completely we can even take it out right here. And change it. Now I have a floating <laughs> palm tree. I'm gonna start at the top because I, if I start down here, I might miss it. So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just gonna, and that looks better. And so, you know, don't get discouraged if you have something like that happen, everybody has stuff like that happen. Everybody, everybody that paints, you know, has something like that happen. And you can't let it um, defeat you. You have to problem solve. What's the problem? What don't I like about it? And how do I fix it? You just have to have faith in yourself that you can and will, will be able to. I didn't add any greens back there to those distant ones um, at all. But we can just see. we go so I'm gonna so that so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stare at it for the next hour and see how I need to fix it <laughs> I I just thank you guys for being with here with me in my studio and I hope you enjoyed it I hope this kind of taught you a little bit you know think about a spider of your palm trees thank you for being here mahalo and aloha Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give this a like. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so you can be notified when I have a new video. I also have support levels over on Patreon. If you would like this free content to keep coming out, you can visit my Patreon channel at patreon.com forward slash Bethany Fields. All the links are in the description. Thank you guys. See you soon.